sing right and pray right on the land. Well, you know that you got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on the land. Well, you know that you got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on.
Good morning, North East Side. Good morning. I pray you had a blessed week. I pray God has been blessing you well. I know God has been, I don't know about y'all, but I keep going back to the fact that God has brought us through a crazy year. I mean, a real crazy year. So, I bet if, if you don't know why you're worshiping this morning, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if this will help you. The Bible talks about uh, coming into his gates with thanksgiving. Uh, you know, you ought to bring thanksgiving into service with you. Uh, you ought to be worshiping before you even get to worship. And I want to thank God. I just thank God. It's been difficult. I've been having a lot of things going on. And many of you know that, uh, that uh, what I have right now, uh, that, that never have right now going. And, and I, I thank you for being patient, being patient with me. But Lord, I'm thanking God for our great deacons and our great staff and uh, ministry leaders who, who make sure things go well. That's why that's how God designed the church. He designed the church where it don't stop with one person. Uh, anybody building a church that's uh, built off one person is not building uh, what the Lord has planned. Amen. So I want to thank all those who, who have been allowing me to serve you while at the same time uh, uh, fight to serve uh, the city in which I live. So thank you for your commitment and your patience. I'm going to preach this morning bold about my victory. Amen. I can't, I can't wait uh, to preach this out of Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 16. But let, let, let me go over this verse just to open up. Uh, uh, Psalms 107, verse 1 and 2 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, uh, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Uh, the, the, the Bible make it clear, it, it make it clear here in Psalm, that those who have experienced redemption uh, have a responsibility of saying so. The redeemed of the Lord ought to be speaking about uh, the grace that they experience of the Lord. The question is, have you been telling people uh, what God has done for you? God has purchased you and put you in a position of great use. Amen. We're going to talk about that out of Romans 16 as we just expose the gospel this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We appreciate your presence. We thank you, Father God, for redemption. Uh, being, Father God, purchased from uh, what hurt us the most sin. We thank you, Father God, for bringing us into your righteousness, to your Son, Jesus, the plan that you orchestrated to save our souls. Father God, we love you. We thank you for this grace. We thank you for being those, those called out because of the gospel. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to still walk in victory. Knowing, Father God, the end, and, and even, and even as you created the mission. We thank you, Father God, for victory. We love you. Be with us in the worship. And may you receive it, Father God, as in, in, in a sacrifice of praise. In Jesus' name we pray that the church say amen.
enjoyed this service. Don't uh, give, give our praise team a hand. Give them a hand. Gene and Corby and all our wonderful praise team leaders who sing uh, so beautifully. And we just thank them so much uh, for the work they have done for us to get us through this pandemic. Now, let, let me just tell you, I'm, I'm just really interested in doing parking praise this coming Sunday. Amen. I, I think we can just do parking like praise uh, as the weather has improved and, and shown us that we get a little spring weather right now. That's going to help us out a little bit. So we want we want to look forward to uh, sending notifications of saying parking lot praise uh, next Sunday. So just just keep your, uh, your your phone available. Amen. Your notifications on uh, because you might get a, a a text this week or a notification saying we're going to have park and praise. Aren't you excited about that? Oh man, I can't wait to see the people of God, amen, and, and come together. And, and we still will share uh, our service online. 
So just give our praise team a hand, and we hope we can get everybody together on next week. Uh, today we're going we're gonna to preach our third sermon series from the uh, third sermon from the series "Walking in Victory." Walking in Victory, uh, you know, our year is about being resilient, bouncing back. Uh, and sometimes when you go through a difficult uh, season like we have over the past year and going into this year, people need to know they can bounce back. Uh, we God will help us bounce back. God always reward us the faithful. He always reward the faithful. So let's let's look into uh, Romans. Chapter 116. The Bible says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the Apostle Paul wrote. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, or starting at faith, ending with faith. As it is written, uh, the righteousness shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. This morning, I want to preach to you bold about my victory, bold about my victory. Unapologetic and unashamed hope. Unapologetic and unashamed hope. I pray you're unapologetic about what you believe in. You know, our faith is, our faith has no, and Jesus Christ have no room for doubt. Uh, you should not be ashamed because you're telling someone about the good news of Jesus Christ. You should not be ashamed. That's our Christian duty to share the message of Jesus Christ. I, I, I want to tell you about this because <clears throat> many of us have probably felt ashamed. Uh, you feel like this is a world that say that message is out of date, that message is irrelevant. But today we want to share with people that the fact that the message about Jesus is never irrelevant, it's never out of date, it's, it's always the best story of mankind. The gospel, the gospel is uh, the uh, purchasing of, of of people who uh, were, were, were slaves of sin. The book of Romans deal with that. We were slaves to sin, but now we're servants of righteousness. We, the book of Romans deal with the righteousness of God. It deal with justification. Uh, and then uh, the book of Romans is so powerful that in chapter three, it revealed that all have sinned. All mankind have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It says that no one is righteous. That's why you're Jew or Gentile, or which is Greek also. Uh, no matter if you was in the covenant of God under the law of Moses, under the Old Testament, or whether you were not, uh, God has judged all mankind to be sin. Matter of fact, if we look at the Bible and it holistically, we see that God created man and gave him free will in the garden. Uh, God, uh, orchestrated the marriage process and who should be in marriage. God orchestrated uh, 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 the plan for family, uh, how families should operate. And we see that God gave man and woman dominion, dominion to rule uh, as God, use the same ability of God among all creation. Man had dominion over fish, of the sea, over the beasts and over the fowls of the air. And man had the ability to make this, had the responsibility and the authority to make decisions on earth under the leadership of God. So from Adam and his, and his relationship with God, we see what God had planned. And then we see the fall of man, the first sin where man thought that he could be equal with God. You see Eve tempted by the serpent, Satan doing what he always does, creating doubt on what God has said. And from Adam to Jesus, sin has reigned. Sin has, has been the master of mankind. Sin has been in control. And what Romans revealed to us is that God has made it clear the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God has a gift available. He made that gift available by giving us his son, Jesus, 100% 
human and 100% God. Uh, God sent his son, born of the flesh, made it clear that he was divine because he's born of the Virgin Mary. And then he came on earth without sin and walked among earth and made the greatest sacrifice for sin, became the, the, the lamb that was unblemished and gave his life on the cross, the, the capital punishment of the Roman day. And here we are saved because God has made his son, who was 100% God, the sacrifice. He put him in the flesh so that the pain would be there. The agony would be there. Gnostic believers tried to fight this, but John dealt with it in his gospel that Jesus was born in the flesh. And here we are with a message that is still relevant, that is still powerful, that is still good today to bring grace to all men that God has forgiven you. And, and, and giving you the victory. Matter of fact, the Bible end with the book, uh, uh, the book of Revelations. Um, and, and, and this book is not a book of sadness. It's, it's a, a book that they start off saying, blessed are those that read this book. And the book of Revelation is talking about victory as John on the Isle of Patmos is taken into a vision. Amen. He's taken into a vision and God show him the things that are to come. Uh, the victory of the lamb, the gospel about Jesus, the lamb who, who paid the price. His hands uh, still have the, have, have the holes there from uh, the nails, his feet. Every, the evidence is still there that Jesus paid the price redemption for our sin. Matter of fact, uh, Paul started this talking about the gospel, Romans chapter one, the purchasing and the redemption story, Romans chapter one, verse one through five. We see Paul give a description of his service, uh, which is a product of the gospel. The gospel calls mankind to walk in service. Paul called himself in verse one of chapter one of Romans, uh, a servant of Christ Jesus. I am serving today because of the gospel. Then he said he's called to be an apostle. Apostle, His function is that he is one sent forth to deliver the gospel. Then he said he's been set apart for the gospel of God. He's been separated, marked out, burned out, uh, to, to be totally committed to the word of God. Paul, what is the description of your service? I am a servant. God invited me to this and gave me a function and he separated me to be focused on what is called the message and delivering of the gospel. Paul, what else does it talk about? Uh, Paul, he said this is was done uh, and this was nothing new in my day and time. Paul said the prophets uh, of old, the prophets of old talked about uh, Jesus. They had prophetic messages of Jesus. That's why in verse two, it says, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. If you read all the prophets and the Old Testament writers, all of them documenting the coming of Jesus. The very first prophecy, Genesis 3.15, is talking about the victory that is in Jesus. Uh, the Old Testament prophets talked about uh, 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 Jesus being born of a virgin. Isaiah talked about this kingdom that is to come. And we, the kingdom has already come. It is here. Jesus taught his disciples about this coming kingdom. And here it is. Paul is giving us the, 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 the gospel uh, in full uh, exposure. He said, which was promised beforehand by the prophets in the Holy Scripture. What was this message concerning his son? We're going to look at 100% human and 100% God. Look what it said. Concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh. According to the flesh, flesh, he is in the bloodline of David. He is a king according to the bloodline of David, but not an earthly king. Oh, Lord Jesus, a, but a king under the dominionship of God. It said he's uh, concerning the son who was a descendant of David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness. Now, look at this. Not only was he born in the flesh through the bloodline of David, he was also declared 
to be divinity because he's the son of God. And according to what the Holy Spirit, uh, God told Mary, or the or angel told Mary was being produced in you is of the spirit. And, and not only that, the evidence is his resurrection from the dead. That was God putting the gospel message in full play. It began with the birth of, of Jesus. It was prophesied before that by the prophets. But when he was resurrected from the dead and there was over 500 witnesses, according to uh, the apostle Paul, and many were alive in his day, we now have uh, the gospel victory in, in, in completed. All now people have to do is obey. Said he was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And it said, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Even Jesus said, and after his resurrection, all power has been given unto me. That's the gospel message. Why is that important? We need to understand that the purchaser, the purchaser, the one who make the sacrifice is the gospel message. Uh, uh, I tell people all the time, we are the products of the gospel. We are not the gospel. The church had to be, had to be purchased. We are the church. We are the called out. We were called out of darkness. But how did we do that? It was through Jesus and his suffering and the shame and the agony on the cross. He is the one who made the sacrifice, not us the called out. We are the product of what we call the gospel. And, and that's an important message because many don't understand that. Now watch this. Jesus Christ is our Lord. When Paul talk about the gospel, he talk about Jesus, not us. He talk about Jesus. Look what it says in verse five, through whom we have received grace. Look what it produced. The gospel produced grace. We received grace and apostleship uh, to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Now, if Jesus is the purchaser, God's plan in, in place to purchase. I, whenever I talk about redemption, I talk about, uh, you know, whenever whenever you go to the grocery store and you, you, you're you buying product, green beans or something, a can of green beans, uh, 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 it belonged to Kroger until someone redeems it, until somebody redeem it. You redeem it by making a payment. Uh, uh, until then, you're still in the hands of the grocery store, unused, uh, unappreciated, just there, not fulfilling your potential. But when somebody come and, and grab you off the shelf <laughs> and take you to the cashier and say, I want to purchase this, that is somebody saying, you are valuable. I need you. And once they pay the price, they work hard for that money to purchase that can of beans. I don't know about you. Uh, uh, I, I'm just glad I'm a bean in the bag. Y'all with me this morning? That's, that's some beans still on the shelf. I, I've learned that God's grace brought me from the shelf, put me in the bag so that I can be used for my purpose. That's what redemption is. Somebody paid the price. Jesus paid the price with his blood for you to get off the shelf, get off the bench and get in the game. Oh man, so that you can function in your appointed position. You've been called. You are a servant. You've been invited. You've been separated from the shelf and all the unused Un, uh, un, unused beans, unpurposeful, uh, feeling, uh, unpurpose driven beans. And now you're in the bag on your way to be service. Oh, y'all, y'all with me this morning to serve. Uh, that's what it means to be redeemed. Jesus purchased us. He, he's the source. He's the one who gave, paid for the product. Now that I'm in the bag, the bag, being in the bag is not the glory of the gospel. The, uh, the gospel is the one that paid for it <laughs> and allowed me to be in his bag. Y'all with me this morning. Oh, Lord. And there's a lot of bags. Sometimes I need to grocery store with one or two bags. But I'm just glad to be in a bag that's going to the same house. You might be in a different bag, but you're going to the same house. Y'all with me this morning. We got to understand the gospel is the message and not the called out. The called out is the product 
of the one who gave his life uh, to purchase. I believe I said something this morning. Give, give God some praise. And, including you, he says, including you who are invited to belong, called to belong to Jesus Christ. So then the book says in verse 7 of chapter 1, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. This is a Gentile area with Jewish leaders also involved in those ministries uh, to all who uh, those in Rome. He said, this message is for all in Rome. Some of us like to focus on specific people, <laughs> but the gospel of Jesus died for everybody to be saved. And the question is, will you answer the gospel that is talking about Jesus? So, so I want to make these points real quick, and then I'm going to take, I said, take my seat. I'm already sitting, but I, I'm going to make these points and the message is yours. So that's three things, uh, four, maybe four things that Paul talk about. Uh, when we, we we get to Romans chapter 1, verse 14, he talk about we're obligated to share this message of the gospel. The message is Jesus. It is not us. We're the called out. <laughs> he the one that purchased. The message should focus on the one who purchased because that's where grace, <laughs> oh, y'all with me this morning, that's where grace originated from. And we are the result of that grace. Y'all with me this morning? Uh, we are the results of that grace uh, that led to a, a function of apostleship and then the obedience to the faith. Uh, we are the results and not the, the main focus. We, 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 we ought to be running around talking about Jesus and not us. Y'all with me this morning. Some of us spend too much time talking about us. But the message that you're obligated to share is the gospel victory. It's the gospel victory. We, we're spending too much time trying to get folks excited about us and the name on our building. And, and, and people look and say the name on the building don't look like obedience to faith. It, it, it looked like another country club, a country club. You pay membership fees to be there. But, but guess what? Uh, I, I don't have to pay. My membership fees are paid in full. Jesus paid the price. I'm praising him for making helping me to be a member of what never belonged to me. I'm not worthy to be here. That's why it's grace. Is there anybody out there? can say they are a product of grace. And grace didn't come from you having the right church sign or having a, a church, the right names or right words on the church sign. The grace come from the one named Jesus. No greater name is that than Jesus. We're obligated to share this victory story, this gospel victory. Look at Romans 1, 14 through 15 says, I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish So. I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Uh, Rome is a place where Gentiles and Jews, those who were once enemies, they, they hear a message that don't divide them from other folks who've been purchased off the shelf and they went, they've been, it's been paid for and which is redemption and they're in the bags. Amen. I, I don't know about y'all. I said it before. There are several bags. Amen. But we all got to the same house. Oh, y'all with me this morning? Uh, look what Paul said. I am under obligation. It is my duty both to the what? Greeks and to the barbarians. To those who are intelligent uh, heathens and to the, the heathens that are foolish and to the wise and the foolish. He said, I'm just ready to come and share. I'm obligated to share this message. Uh, uh, we got to get out the business of trying to pick the fish from the sea. Y'all women this morning, there's all kind of fish in the sea. Uh, but church folks, folks that are called out, ecclesia folks. Are folks of all kinds. Y'all with me this morning. Uh, there's some fish from the hood. There's some fish from the suburbs. There's some fish of different colors. And, and that's what make the sea beautiful. Y'all with me this morning. There, there are fish that, that, that are on the side of the sea that have a lot of worms. Amen. And there's fish that's over there struggling. But the key is that if you've been purchased off the shelf. Oh, man. And you're heading I've been, been heading to the house in the bag. You ought to get excited to be able to tell somebody what God has done for you. Grace has knocked on your shelf. Grace has brought me from the bondage of, uh, of somebody that didn't consider me uh, valuable. But God purchased me to be useful 
and, pro and pr uh, productive in my function. Oh, y'all with me this morning. Give God some praise that you've been purchased, oh, Lord Jesus, uh, whether you was wise or unwise. Anybody ever been unwise before? Anybody uh, would have been considered a barbarian? I did some foolish things. I don't deserve to be in the kingdom of God. Amen. The real church folks know this. They don't deserve to be in the kingdom of God. We're just excited to be there because grace brought us in. Unmerited favor brought me into the kingdom of God. And I'm excited to tell somebody that Jesus is the answer. You need grace to get off the shelf of being unused. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, you want to be a servant. You want to be called and you want to be functional in Jesus. So you're obligated to share the gospel victory. The second thing you know, you ought to be unashamed to share the gospel victory. You ought to be unashamed, unashamed and unapologetic. You know, when I talk about Jesus, I don't care what platform I have. I, I'm going to share Jesus. I want to pray with you. I don't care what, if you're a politician or no matter what you may be, I will pray with you. I'm going to share my faith. I don't force my faith on no one because faith can't be forced. Faith is a choice. And the problem in America is we're trying to force our faith on everybody. You don't force, you influence, you tell. If you spend time talking about Jesus, you don't have to force people to believe what you believe. Y'all hear me? You, you spend time acting like Jesus. You don't have to force people to, to see what you see and, and what, you, what you're convicted of. Because mm. it's good news and not bad news. Most of us made it bad news because we talk about us. We focus on us and not him. Uh, we, we, we talk about the called out. The called out is an ugly story. Y'all with me this morning? Anybody know you an ugly story, but you got a good God that showed his grace towards you? My story is ugly, but his story is righteousness. And that's why I'm excited that he purchased me because I'm not worthy. That's the grace. That's the grace. Look what it says in verse 16. So Paul says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul, what are you saying? I am not embarrassed. I am unapologetic. I am bold. I am confident of this message. What is the message? Uh, the, uh, the gospel that, cert that fixed the sin issue is Jesus, not us. It's Jesus. Uh, I'm a servant because of this message. I'm appointed and called and invited to this me to serve in this message as an apostle. I've been separated because of this message. I, I, I'm the prophetic promise of Jesus has been spoken of before I receive this message. I have the source and not the product of this message. I am part of the redemption story. I am now a, a beneficiary of the redemption story. How can I be ashamed of grace? How can I be ashamed? I'm obligated and I'm not ashamed. If you're not telling somebody about Jesus, you're obviously telling them you're ashamed. If you're not spreading the message of Jesus, if we're just keeping it to ourselves, you're showing that you're ashamed because Apostle, Apostle Paul in this chapter previous to these verses said, I'm in a hurry. I'm eager to get to you. I'm eager to get to Rome. I've been trying to get there, but I can't wait to get there because I got to share this story. And I am not ashamed of this story. Is there anybody out there that know you can't afford to be ashamed? Too many folks are dying for you to be ashamed. If you're on, online with us this morning, guess what? You need to hear this message. Because you shouldn't be ashamed. Hear God's voice. Because it's for the Jews and the Greeks. Everybody can receive grace from this message. So we shouldn't be ashamed. Look, look, look what it says in verse 17. There are examples of righteousness from start to finish of the gospel. Uh, I, I, I got to start with faith. And what faith does, the stronger my faith gets, it ends in perfect faith. Now watch this. One of the arguments in Romans is you can't work for your salvation. The Jews are used to a work system. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. They, they were so caught up in works to the point where they didn't realize the Old Testament was written for our learning. The standards of God, we can't keep them. We, we can't be perfect. We're, we're flawed. We're beautifully made, but we're flawed because we have a spirit that can't handle free will. And, and so what, what Paul exposed in chapter three, we all have sinned. And falling short of the glory of God. So those who are trying to keep uh, uh, regulations and a church base of major regulations and enforcing them and calling out people's sins. First of all, recognize that we all have a sin 
issue. We're all uh, falling short uh, of his, his grace or the mark that he set for us. Look what it says in the gospel. It says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed, starting with faith and ending with faith. Uh, uh, when we look at what Jesus is, we see what it means to kick off our faith, the starting point. There's two prepositions used, from and for. The first one represents uh, the starting, how I start my journey. The second one represents the, the, the result or the, 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 the place that I get to. Uh, the place I end with. Jesus is my example from faith to faith, from the starting point of saying yes to the ending point. If I want to see the gospel story, I see Jesus coming to earth as a child, being perfect without sin. I see his good deeds, his ministry. We see we see him, him enduring the shame, keeping his eyes focused ahead on, on the glory that he'll receive, the glory that shall be revealed. And we see even in death, we see Jesus' resurrection is what Paul already mentioned. That's the end game, that even when we die, we're going to be resurrected again. Don't you know there's a day coming where every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess when God come back. There is an end game for every saint. We all may will taste death. A few will only be changed in the twinkling of an eye. But when the Lord come back, that the, your faith from faith to faith, Jesus in his life, that is the gospel, his life, and what he has done to the point of resurrection, that's the gospel. It revealed what righteous the righteousness of God is. Oh, y'all, I mean, from faith to faith. As it is written, it says that the righteous shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 and 4. What is that? The righteous will live like Jesus from, from his coming to uh, earth and 100% flesh and 100% God, human and divinity, from, from his, his uh, coming here, like the prophet said of old, even to his death. That is the story we're talking about. We are the results. And he said, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of this story. And, and, and this is the righteousness of God uh, to, from, from the start to finish. This is the gospel of victory. And the, that the righteous shall live by what faith. What is that? Jesus. Jesus, the life of Jesus. And what God did for us on the old rugged cross. My last point. Uh, we should encourage people to obey the gospel of victory. We should encourage people to do it. This is why Paul said, I'm, I'm in a hurry to get to Rome. I'm trying my best to get there. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm obligated, obligated to get there, number one, to share this story of Jesus, his life and death. He said, I'm unashamed to come and get there and tell you the gospel of victory. And, and, and if you want to know the, the power of this story, it's from Jesus' birth to his death. This is what the prophet's been trying to tell us about. This is what the Old Testament writers were telling us about from Genesis all the way to the end of the Old Testament. This is what they've been telling us about. What we pre He said, I'm preaching about trying to get to you and tell you. Why do I need to tell you? Because there's some folks that need to know that, that, that they, you need to be encouraged, encouraged to obey the gospel. Look what it says in verse 18. For the wrath of God, God's anger is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. What is that ungodliness? Who by their unrighteousness, they are suppressing the truth. They're holding down the truth. And, and sometimes we can do this in our preaching, talking about us instead of Jesus. You're suppressing the truth. You're more worried about how to do Sunday morning than who gave you the, who blessed you with something to, to praise about on Sunday morning. You're talking more about uh, what, who can do on Sunday morning. Uh, than the one who <laughs> gave you something to shout about earlier one Sunday morning. Uh, you spend more time talking about the, the, the name on a church sign than the one in his life of Sunday morning, what, 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 what he did when he got up early one Sunday morning. The, the gospel that purchased us, the, the, what purchased us was Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. We are the product of his sacrifice, his payment. He said, that's why he says, it's important for people to know the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness, they are suppressing 
the truth. They, the truth is not coming out in this purity. And they, they, we're not telling, we're not talking about just him and him crucified. We got so many additional things that we add to a message that was meant to be simple. Uh, I, I, he says, for what can be known about God is plain. Look what he said, can be plain to them because God has shown it or manifested it to them. My question this morning is, will you, will you accept the simplicity of the message? It's about Jesus. How do we get grace and truth? What is the truth that's being suppressed in this text? It is that Jesus uh, was, was, was died. He was killed by ungodly men. He went in the grave, uh, given his life, blood was shed, body was broken. And, and on three days later, early one Sunday morning, he was resurrected. Why, would, why, would, why did he do that? To get me off the shelf of being in bondage and unused. Unused in the right way. I, I, not used for, uh, uh, the, uh, unusing without a purpose uh, being used right now. And Jesus purchased us. And he put us in a bag for us to feel feel our purpose. And, and, and we've been redeemed, like Paul said, to be servants who've been invited to this mission. Uh, we, we've been separated from one position of being in sin to being the righteousness of God. We're justified. Would mean that now when we go into the court, the, the judge, the courtroom, uh, because of Jesus' sacrifice, we've been made right with God. That's the righteousness of God. And I don't know about you. You ought to give God some praise right now. You give God some praise if you've been you've been justified, sanctified. That grace and mercy is all over you. It's not that you're perfect. Stop talking about us and let's start talking about him. It's because he is perfect that we have a reason to shout. Even when we come together on Sunday, we're, we're flawed people under grace. We've just been washed in the blood of Jesus. The question is how? Do you come to faith? Peter Peter made this simple. Matthew 16. Uh, he said, uh, Peter made a confession. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. The greatest confession you can make is to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Uh, and God sent his son, which was all in this text, uh, that, that Jesus is of the lineage of David. But he is, uh, his story don't begin being born of Mary. He's the son of God who has come down to redeem mankind. When men failed to do God's will perfectly before, God sent Jesus to make your life a life of redemption. Amen. And you can, once you obey Jesus, obey God by giving your life to Jesus in faith. Uh, you repent of your sin. Lord, I'm sorry. I failed you, Lord. I, 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 I can't believe I have not showing you the reverence you deserve. Once you repent, you go down in the water of grace of baptism. You, you, you wash away your sins. You come up a new creature. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sin, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we used to sing a song in gospel means, oh, why not tonight? Oh, why not tonight? I'm asking you the question, oh, why not this morning? Oh, why not this morning? When you give your life to Jesus, Send us a message about uh, in the in, in the church uh, thread or, or on Facebook or us uh, uh, Gmail us at northeastside coc at gmail dot com. Uh, reach out to me if you got connection to my messenger or uh, my emails or. Uh, uh, on my page. You you can give your life to Jesus. If you're in another city, we'll call somebody in this city if we have connection. And find somebody to baptize you in the water of grace of baptism. It don't matter what uh, where you go. It's, it matter that you've been baptized and you're obedient to the gospel. If we can find a gospel preacher to baptize you, you'll be baptized in the water of grace of baptism. I don't know too many people in China, but I might be able to find somebody to put you in the water of grace of baptism. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise. Respond to this message. If you need prayer, put it in the prayer line right now. Put it in the thread. Put it on Instagram. I mean, put it on Facebook. Put it on YouTube. Amen. Or just or just send it to us by by, by email and, and as as we sing a song of invitation. Without you, Lord. Just to give you a moment. Without you, Lord. I stay on the stay on the line.
word from the Lord. That's just gospel 101. Amen. I pray you enjoyed that word. I just pray you enjoyed that word. I'm trying to uh, talk about this victory and make sure you know what the Lord has done for you. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. If you don't know by now, you ought to be telling somebody about Jesus. Go and praise the Lord in the text thread or, or on, on, on YouTube or Facebook. Go and give the Lord some hand claps of praise right now. Give it to him because Lord, you, are, you have been redeemed. Uh, you are walking in victory. Uh, we, we just talked about being bold about my victory. And the Apostle Paul laid it out in Romans chapter 1. Being obligated, you obligated uh, to share the gospel story. You should be unashamed. And Jesus is the example, example of, of righteousness from start to finish. And you, you should be encouraged to obey the gospel of victory. Encourage you. Why? Because God's wrath has been revealed. God don't like sin. He hated so much that he tried to. He sent Jesus to encourage us with grace, uh, to give our lives to him. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. We come down to another part of our service, which is the communion, uh, the good Lord's sacrifice. We talk about that sacrifice on the cross this morning. And what we do is we just take a moment to sit around the Lord's table and, and, and thank him for the sacrifice and remember his broken body and his blood that was shed. Let us give thanks for the body and blood. Father God, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made through Jesus. We thank you, Father God, his body was bruised for our iniquities. His blood was shed, Father God, so we can be in a new covenant with you. His life was given. But Father God, what he revealed to us and uh, in, in what the righteousness of faith is, is in the end game, Father God, that we'll get up in victory. The death will have no sting. The grave will have no victory. We'll be up walking in victory among you, Father God. We thank you for knowing that, Father God, we'll be received unto you, Father God, in the glorious, uh, in the glory of eternity. We love you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. We come to another part of our service, which is the collection. And every Sunday we give, and also we also take up an offering on the first day of the week uh, as the early disciples. And we just want to thank you for all those who've been faithfully given throughout uh, the pandemic, even to this point. And we're looking forward. We're looking forward to coming to together again. And as I said uh, in this before the sermon, hopefully we can have park and praise next week. So pay attention to your notification. But we thank you because you have remained in church even outside the building. And that's what's most important, that you know that you are the church and not a building. And because of technology, we have the ability to assemble online, assemble online. And we love our noon prayer calls. So we thank all those who've been faithful to it and keeping it going. Amen. Amen. But we we have to give. We believe in giving. We believe giving is a principle that started uh, before the Old Testament and New Testament. You see uh, uh, Abraham given to King Melchizedek and, and he offered a tithe, the king of Salem, uh, the priest and king. Uh, God, uh, he, he gave a, a sacrifice, amen, uh, 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 after, after the victory over the kings. And, and we see throughout the Old Testament uh, the a practice of 10% tithing uh, in, in the, uh, among the Jews uh, and the widows, the orphans, and the temple workers were, were taken care of. And even in Malachi, the Lord said, test me and see if I would not open up a window and pour out a blessing that you won't be able to receive it. Uh, so guess what? The Lord said, try me. I promise I bless you. And we need to remember that when we give this morning. So let's give this morning. You can give on Cash App, Money is Signed, N-E-S-C-O-C. You can give on Givelify. Look up Northeast Side Church of Christ in Bartlett, Tennessee. And you can also uh, 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 just Mail it, uh, mail it in. Get with Diane and you'll know where to mail it to uh, and reach out to her on our Gmail account and we'll find a way to get uh, to you for your offering. Let us pray for the offering. Let us pray for the offering. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for uh, just the ability to give. Father God, everything we have, Father God, comes through you, Father God. We just thank you. We thank you, Father God, because uh, you've been blessing us, Father God, to be a blessing. 
And we mentioned it, Father God, and bounce back blessings. When we give, Father God, when we give, Father God, you bless back. Father God, help us to help somebody else. Help us to not only think of ourselves, Father God, but sometimes uh, you give us uh, blessings that roll over, pour over, Father God, into our saucer, Father God, so that we can bless somebody else, Father God. So we thank you for the ability to be to give and bless those in need. Father God, we uh, pray that, Father God, this seed that is sown by your people in the kingdom, Father God, will be given and used for the edification of the body of Christ. May ministry be done in a mighty way and pleasing in our sight, Father God. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. This is what you're going to say, Zari. Amen. Amen. Worship, man, what a word, what a word. And I pray you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed preaching it. Uh, and we just pray that uh, you've been edified and blessed this morning. That's what it's about, edification, not entertainment, but edification. But we love to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. We love to have a good time in the Lord. Hey, I, 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 I know I love to have some uh, some church. Amen. We call it having some church, but we are the church, so you can't have it. We are the church. Amen. We got to be the church. So uh, as we worship today, we pray to just carry you over uh, into Sunday, uh, Wednesday night Bible class. We'll be starting Wednesday night Bible class. Give Sister Liggins and Brother Liggins a hand. Brother Liggins for filling in in the state of the church address. And Sister Liggins for leading us into understanding the, uh, the, the present day health concerns in the health ministry. We want to thank you for uh, what you did on Wednesday night. And I had a chance to see it. And I thank you uh, for what you've done. And pray that the church is more informed about how we can open up. And until then, we'll, we'll be we'll work to get toward uh, having park and praise until the day we can open fully. So just, just keep on the lookout. Stay informed. Stay informed about Northeast Side. Amen. Stay informed. Keep up with, if Diane sends you something, look at it. Don't just look over it. Look at it uh, and, and make sure you are informed. All right, as we get ready to dismiss, we just pray all things as well with you and you stay healthy, you stay healthy. Uh, keep being safe and being, being cautious, uh, but just be uh, be faithful. Be faithful and trust in God in all things. Then you're not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll 
direct your path. Amen. Amen. See you next Sunday at 10, 945 for pre-worship at 10 a.m. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. You've been better to us than you, we've been to ourselves. Father God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for mercy, but we thank you for Jesus, truth. We thank you for what is truth, your son, Jesus. That Father God, he, uh, he, he died on the cross for our sins. He was buried, Father God, and he was resurrected on the third day. And we thank you, Father God, that this ended in victory, that it ended, Father God, in victory. We love you, Father God. Uh, we thank you for all the provisions you have made for us, uh, Father God, even to the point of living in eternity. We thank you. Bless the church. Bless the healthcare workers. Bless emergency workers, essential workers. Bless those who are sick, Father God, in the hospital. Bless all the families dealing with the deaths, Father, a loved one. We just praying of all the nursing homes, the jails, all those, Father God, who stand in need of prayer. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, we pray that the church say, Amen.